So, Amber Heard, hey? Not a good position to be in, that girl. I feel really sorry for her. I feel really sorry for her, actually. Because there's a bunch of stuff that that I've noticed. And she's come out of this really badly. However she expected it to go, however she most wanted it to go, it really hasn't gone the way she could have wished. And her prospects, I mean, however burning bright her, her dream for her, her career as an actress, has been her prospects now at the moment really don't look very good right i mean if it, what does she do from now the reason i'm i'm looking at this is because what i've noticed is the media and the world are extremely exacting of women. I mean, this is a, a feminist channel, but uh, it's just the vantage point that I, I notice things from. Women, women, there's such a high expectation of women and their expected behavior or, or behavior that's considered normal. There, there is such an extremely high still even today, expectation of behavior from women. There's still a double standard. And I'm going to get to the issue about the poop. The poop. Everybody knows about the poop. Amber <laughs> leaving quite an enormous uh, parcel on Johnny Depp's side of the bed. Here's the thing. Have you ever seen Jackass? The TV show Jackass? Okay, if you haven't, just, just Google it. If you're familiar with it, you'll know what I'm saying. Uh, you must be familiar with 101 different memes, jokes, and prank videos that the average, that are coming from men, coming from men and young guys all around the world. And their pranks are ridiculous. Some of them extremely disgusting, extremely callous, extremely callous, many of them. And the world sort of goes along and goes, oh, that's just boys being boys. That's just men being men. They're allowed to, they're allowed to, to go ahead and do that kind of thing without much judgment on them. However, a woman goes and does something similar like that, like Amber Heard in this case. She does this thing. If you look at it, look at the prank. Yes, it's disgusting. It's disgusting, sure. But she didn't hurt anybody. Because that's a prank, right? It, it, it supposedly should. A prank should always just stay as a joke and it shouldn't be hurting anybody. She hasn't hurt anybody. Not with that prank. But the world has a whole furore about it. Everyone's going nuts about it. Men and boys and teenage men, they perform pranks all the time that are absolutely disgusting. One woman does it and everybody is leaping on her. Is her whole career going to be torn apart by this one prank that she did? Where are we? Okay, I'm going to address her lying. Yes, she, I don't know, I mean, like, I, I don't know that much about her, but from what it looks like and from the immense amount of the sheer scale of videos and reference to her all around the internet. Um, it looks like she's probably been lying quite a bit. Okay, there's a fair amount of manipulation. There's a lot of manipulation. I mean, she's acting. There's a lot of acting going on. You're not sure what, what's real and what's her a lot of the time. What I've noticed about people who lie, lie just on default. People who lie on default, people who manipulate, 
constantly lying and manipulating. There's, there's a reason why they're doing it. There's always a reason why. And what it looks like is that maybe in her past, part, I, I guess, in her past, maybe in her growing up years, what she's learned that works in the world is that her telling the truth is not enough. Her telling the truth is not enough. Whatever she has to give, whatever she has to offer, she has to embellish. She has to maybe exaggerate or add something because she, in her mind, she will never get what she thinks she's due unless she fabricates on top of what is already true. And this says probably quite a lot about her, her past, maybe her growing up years. Maybe she was, you know, what often happens with kids is they're not believed. Kids growing up in certain households, just being, just being the status of a kid alone, you're often not believed. You're frequently not taken seriously. And especially if you're pretty. I mean, Amber is drop dead gorgeous. If you're pretty, what, what is the, the, there's a kind of, there's like a, a pretty girl disadvantage kind of thing. Like you'll win in certain situations, but in other situations, it really functions as, as quite a disadvantage because people seem to look at attractive people or girls, let's just say attractive people and go, oh, that's your gift. In this life, that's your gift. So I can pay attention to what you look like, but whatever comes out of your mouth is very secondary or just by the way, because your gift in this life is the way you look. So therefore, whatever you say, eh, it, it, you know, you know what I mean? So growing up where she did, she was probably learning that the truth was never going to get her what she wanted. What she wanted and what she felt she was due was never going to happen. Just being honest and forthright about things as they are. Something else I've noticed about this whole Amber Heard trial is, so she's been in this business quite a long time. Like, She's known since the get-go of what she, she wanted to do. She sounds pretty focused. And she's been doing everything she can to get as much spotlight as possible, to get as, as high um, in her career society as she possibly can. Not once in this whole trial has she mentioned any prejudiced treatment or any misogynist treatment a bad treatment from males towards her outside of not outside of Johnny Depp like she's giving her her accounts about a lot of things and she mentions she talks about her career before not once does she mention anything about misogynist misogynistic or prejudiced treatment from males she doesn't mention it at all but if you look at her if you just look at her you can count on it that that girl has experienced probably at least five instances in her life of pretty bald-faced prejudice and misogyny based on the fact that she's a very attractive female. She's probably had come-ons. She's probably been inappropriately treated. She's probably been dropped in favor of somebody else who had a slightly different, you know, thing happening and it was probably looks based. Not once does she reference any form of misogynistic treatment from the entertainment industry, from Hollywood. And you know it has been rife, right? She doesn't touch this. And I'm going to say it's probably because she knows it's in... She knows it's use useless. She is, it's useless to do this. The Me Too movement, like she can only, she can't subscribe to it. She can't subscribe to the rest of it because she's focusing on this thing with Johnny. 
there's there's some beef there there's some something going on between them there's there's all they, they've got relationship history that i can't even begin to i mean i'm not even going to go into i'm not even going to try but this lady hasn't even mentioned once any instances of unfairness or inappropriate treatment but you you know they probably did happen you know they did look at her and i was going to say like I think she probably hasn't mentioned any, from the industry, any misogynistic treatment or inappropriate treatment or advances in her whole career until now. She hasn't mentioned any of it. Probably because in her experience and in her past, she counts it as normal. Mm -hmm. To her, it's probably normal. So she's not mentioning it. She's not mentioning it as anything as special because that's just been her experience in the past before. She was saying how when she first met Johnny, I think it was on Pineapple Express, that the really interesting thing, the cool thing about hanging out with him was that they wound up talking about books and poetry and obscure, um, obscure books, etc. And that really blew her away because... Here she is talking about books and pop culture. And that was probably probably one of the things that really endeared him to her. Because she'd probably experienced nothing like that before. The average director calling her into his office is not going to talk to her about books and poetry and movies and whatever. The average director, the average, I mean, look at it. Look at the world. Look at Hollywood. Amber Heard. Are they going to be, are they going to be thinking about, oh, I can probably talk to this girl about books. No, that's not on their mind at all. Is it? No. So yeah, back to the, all the, the lying, whether they be white lies or not, the lying and the manipulation and the acting, she's, Man, she's, she's got this whole thing going 24-7, it looks like. It must be exhausting. Think about it. Maintaining that. As long as you're on, as long as you're out in the public, as long as you're in front of cameras, imagine maintaining that. The effort, the energy that goes into it, it must be exhausting beyond words. She must get home and just be like, comatose on the couch. I can probably see, I can see that. She must be comatose on the couch or she must be in a vegetative state in front of the TV just going, I want Coke and cookies and I want, I want to watch junkie TV because my life is really awful. Man, if you look at her, that girl, man, she's not a happy person. With all her build-up for whatever she's doing, if you had to look at her, even when she's smiling, okay, she's smiling for the cameras in certain other instances before this trial, I wouldn't call her happy. She's not happy. There's a lot going on under the surface there. I feel for her, this kid. The whole facade is there because she thinks, she thoroughly believes that what she inherently is, is not enough. Will never be enough, so she has to build up something around her. I read something once, I, didn't, I haven't read many books by him, but I have read enough from him and about him to know. There, there was a guy, uh, Carl Jung, Carl Jung, Carl Jung, Carl, C-A-R-L, and then J-U-N-G, Carl Jung, okay, and he wrote, a really smart guy, did a lot before, you can check him out, um, dead now, he once said that all those people, all those people, all those entities out there that are the source of torture, they're torturing, they are creating misery for other people, creating misery, creating, just making life extremely difficult for others around them and creating pain and 
drama. The torturers are the tortured. The torturers are the tortured. Basically, they torture others because they themselves are tortured souls inside them. If they were completely happy and balanced people, they wouldn't be doing this. If they were completely happy and balanced and chill, with no issues, with no past horror or past neglect or anything, they would be totally different people. They wouldn't be doing what they do. This woman is a torturer because she is highly tortured. I, f I feel that when I look at her. She's a tortured soul. There's, there's a lot going on inside her and she has deep anger. She has such deep anger. I don't want to know, I don't know if I want to say hatred, but she is deeply angry. This is one thing about this girl. She's so angry. What's made her so angry? She's, she's not that old. Like I'm, I'm 42. How old is she? Like in thirties? I don't know. I, I, I have no idea how old, how old she is, but what has she lived through? To make her so angry. I mean, she doesn't look stupid. Like, for, from what I've seen, she, she can represent herself pretty well. And she, uh, she can, you know, she reads things. She, she has a good turn of phrase. You know, she's, she's not a stupid person. She's not. And, and going, going through the world as an intelligent, thinking girl, female, from the get-go. What is it that's happened to her? And she's come to this instance and she's just exploding with anger. You can see it. She's, there's a latent fire, thinly veiled fury, thinly veiled anger that comes up obviously when she's under stress or I don't know if she's the, she's the drinking type. I, I don't know, actually know her deal with drinking, but it doesn't seem like she's the drinker. It seems like Johnny's the drinker. She's so angry. I would say if there was any savior, if there was any redeeming action that she could take from here onwards, I mean, this, this case is toast for her. This case is toast. I'm not sure what she has in mind for her future, but I would say if there was any hope for her future, what she could do is take a deep dive, deep dive into her whole psychological condition, whatever's going on with her, and make that her thing. Go wide open on her brain. Go wide open deep. Explore all the issues. And maybe, I don't know, make a series or something on, maybe you could title it, Why, Why Am I Like This, Amber Heard? Why am I like this? How did I get here? And her whole life story, utter truth from the get-go, all her thoughts, everything behind it, could be quite a story. Because where did her anger come from? She's so angry. She's Like, the, there are a lot of actresses and, and, and personalities out there, but... I don't know if I've picked up this much deep seething anger from someone before. So what happened? I would love to know what that is. This could be her vein from now on. Like going back to regular movies, no one's going to touch her. But if she, if she took this bull by the horns and she went with it and she just busted it right open and went right to the source of who she is and her whole history, her growing up and everything. And if she, you know, use it almost like entertainment psychological education damn that that's what i mean everyone's looking into this nowadays the whole narcissism thing like how does that happen you know like this this lying this manipulation it's all pointing to the fact that they're very sure that what they are is not enough they have to embellish because they're very empty inside but with her there's additional anger there's such fury such anger there 
Oof. Where is it coming from? What happened to her? What, what, what were the thought processes inside her that made her so very angry? Because I would say it looks like her and Johnny actually really did love each other. They really did love each other quite deeply. And it, it looked like they met each other and it didn't take long for them to decide. I mean, he, he has dated people for a very long time without getting married, right? But he meets Amber and within a couple, few months, they're married. I think she said, she said, she offered like, oh, maybe we should do a prenuptial agreement. And then it just, Johnny said, no, never mind. Oh man, what a mess, hey? And I'm going to, I'm going to come back to the, the domestic violence thing. Yes, you could definitely say that there's been some domestic violence. I mean, hurling glass bottles at people's heads or people's bodies, of course, that's going to inflict a fair amount of damage. I'm going to say something about the severed finger, though. The severed finger, I'm... You have to admit, she didn't mean to do that. She threw the bottle with intent for it to hit him. Not to kill him, just to hit him. Make him aware. Yes, to hurt him, too. But I'm going to say she threw that bottle with no intent to sever his finger. She didn't mean to do that. That, that, was, that was horrible circumstance, you know, horrible accident. And the, 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 the sad thing with her is, like, she has, she's, she's lied so much and manipulated so much in certain other directions. So much so that people don't believe her anymore. She has no credence. So that even if anything she has said that maybe Johnny has done to done something to her or has has been slightly violent to her or violent around her, she's just not gonna be taken seriously at all. She's not taken seriously at all until now. Because of her of her lies and manipulation in other areas. So that doesn't leave her in a good place either. The whole, the severed finger and the poop. Two terrible counts against her. Even though with the severed finger, she didn't mean to. That, that, was, that was circumstantial. She really didn't mean to sever his finger. That was a bottle breaking and glass. And the poop, it was a prank with no intent to inflict pain on anyone. She was sending a message, sure. But I don't think she meant anyone pain with the poop. No pain with the poop. 